Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Thursday, January the 6th, 2022, 3 p.m. Eastern. We'll be having a reverse aging health call tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern on this line. Special guest Michael Thomas, creator and inventor of the Halo System. The invitation today for all of us is to sit with whatever it is that's troubling you in your life. Whatever your problem, worry, or concern is, just sit with it and within it until you have found peace. Do not move a muscle until you are truly okay with yourself on the deepest levels and no longer disturbed by this life change. Unhappiness perpetuates when we don't meet issues face to face. When we don't think we are bigger than the issue, we avoid it. The truth is, what can be bigger than the soul that you are? Whenever something difficult that arises and you take the time to sit and embrace it, you are not trying to change it, but merely understanding what its real purpose is on a beneficial level. Approach that hardness which is bubbling up from within you with a sweet curiosity. When you meet any negative energy, ask it immediately, who are you? What are you here to teach me? What could you possibly need to learn at this stage of your life? It most likely has something to do with what you are here to receive. Asking the difficult parts inside you some questions will take you deeper inside yourself where you will find all the solutions to whatever you're facing. It is always best to relax and trust this process. The more you can relax, the easier it becomes to continue embracing these difficult parts that are here to help each of us grow, enlighten, and mature. We will always find our most empowered self residing at the deepest core issue inside. One who is connected is the energy stream. One who is connected to the energy stream is more powerful than a million who are not. One who is connected to the energy stream is more powerful than a million who are not. And two who are harmoniously focused and connected to the energy stream brings about a co-creative endeavor that cannot be matched by anything else in all of this universe. Abraham Hicks. Everyone has access. We all do. We all have access to a magical power inside, inside of each of us, that goes beyond all the limitations of what our rational society knows to be true. We each are able to tap into a world of infinite potentiality, where anything, anything, anything is possible, and our dreams really do come true. Most naysayers out there would scoff at this perspective, yet little do they know that they too are creating their own reality by the negativism they hold. Once they loosen their grip just a bit, completely wound a point of view they are clenching, they will see that there is room in this amazing universe for all sorts of wild things. If you just look around you, you will notice that this world that we are each living in consists of polar opposites. There is duality around every corner. You have dark and light, day and night, male and female, high and low, good and bad, right and wrong. You can also interpret these opposites as complementary energies since they depend on each other to coexist. With this said, if there is a world of typical, mundane, normal existence, there too must also exist its opposite, or 
complementary side. There must exist a magical realm that defines all the typical laws that we suppose that we suppose to be true in our everyday reality. This is the world of unlimited energy and infinite possibilities, which has to exist to counterbalance the world of the ordinary mind. The invitation at this point in the game is for you to let go and trust that all things, all things, all things are possible in your life. If you don't trust, you will miss. You won't miss the small things. You will miss the great things, and which the greatest of them all is love. For love contains that which makes all things possible. It brings life to where there should have been death, and yields abundance to where poverty could have crept in. So I invite each of you to take a step into your inner world today. And imagine that whatever you believe to be true is your truth manifesting in your world. Deep down inside you is something that is powerful beyond measure. There is an omnipotent magic genie, if you will, who is here to grant your every wish and desire. This powerful being is always listening to your every word, gesture, and command forever ready to assist you in creating the physical reality that your heart is longing for. The most important aspect of all for you to realize is that your genie can hear the importance of your wishes through the emotional energy you have. When you radiate out a very strong feeling about something, this energy activates and awakens your inner genie to get busy and start manifesting the beliefs behind that emotion. So no matter whether your thoughts are negative or positive, it will manifest whatever your strongest feelings tend to be. Your genie is a very sharp and a very sharp and perceptive. It takes commands based on whatever your attention and focus falls upon. Your awareness is the guidance system where it knows to wave its magic manifesting hands. If your mind is continuously having a strong yearning desire for something to manifest, your genie will feel and hear the neediness and lacking feelings that you're generating. It will then support you with creating more lack and empty results in the outer world. If you have a strong feeling about something that you absolutely don't want to occur, your genie will sense that negative feeling of what you don't want and give you more challenge, adversity, and negativity to deal with. Your genie knows that you are its master, and so it doesn't doubt your lead. It would never think that you made a mistake in what you choose to focus your divine attention upon. It is aware that you are more divine, intelligent, and powerful than itself. So it will go ahead and manifest challenging situations for you. Perhaps your life may be too boring or your soul is not learning as much as it could and you need some extra grist churning inside your mill. The key to befriending your magic genie is to know it is always listening and to be very specific about what you are focusing on. The more clear and certain you are about your desires, the faster your genie will hand them over to you. Yet, you cannot just haphazardly think about what you want in your life. You must choose to use your heart and get and gut and know that this is it. By being so certain about it, you really relax inside and can allow the feeling of accepting your manifestation's arrival. Being single in your desire is the greatest secret of all to getting aligned with the full power behind your magic genie. If your mind is full of too many needs, full of too many needs, wants, and desires, your genie will get confused and unable to hear specifically what you most want. It is essential that you take time to be still and get very, very, very quiet inside before you start requesting anything. 
from the silent space within you, be clear enough to choose just one thing that makes your heart sing. As long as there is a knowing that your request has been received, it all depends on how deep your connection is with your magic genie as to how effortless the materialization occurs. There is so much magic inside us all that it is just waiting to burst out into our lives. It wants to create the most amazing relationships, abundance, income, inspiring career, and feelings of unstoppability in all that each of us do. There is absolutely an understanding to get ready to be granted full access to the inner realms where your genie lives and becomes the master of your destiny. The mind turned inwards is the self turned outwards. The mind turned inwards is the self turned outwards. It becomes the ego and all the world. In each moment of, of this life, we have the choice to respond to life from a completely new, alive, and freeing space that is born in the now. We can react from an older, unconscious, conditioned pattern that stems from a past story. The choice is always yours in each second. If you respond from a fresh place of freedom or from a past conditioning, the, this, the type of story we are talking about is not that enjoyable fantasy fairy tale story that we all enjoy listening to around the campfire. It's that one that, that we drag around like an old ball and chain attached to a heavily shielded yet wounded heart. The infamous victim story is one of the most, is one most of us know all too well. It's the one that is fixated on how another wronged us, or how we were, are struggling with money, or unable to find the love of our life, or create the career we really want. We often unconsciously believe that by repeating the story over and over, it will help us to escape. It'll help us to escape it, transcend it, or feel better about our poor, lonely, victimized self. What really happens is that by repeating that what we do want to manifest in our lives, we simply become more wrapped up in the ego's illusions of being trapped, helpless, and powerless. The good news is, is that we always have the power to, to transcend our story if we can become conscious enough to see who or what is truly creating it. It's good to know that all of our stories were created by some life event, big or small, that actually happened. The event naturally occurred, then the mind took over and invented its special, specific, positive or negative meaning on top of the actual event. So take this entire week to write down and notice all the stories you tend to repeat in your mind and to other people. This is a very powerful, life-changing exercise. Notice if they are positive or negative stories, and who would you be without any of these stories? These stories stick because something happened in your life that your mind judged as wrong or absolutely always right and found some sort of peace within that perception. However, when you hold on to any thought, or idea about this life too lightly, you become overly attached and miss this amazing universe that's happening now. Attachment always leads to some future suffering, and it's always our choice. If we want to be free and manifest more of amazing goodies or be stuck with the same old small tune. Keeping a story from your past alive takes a lot of work and will drain 
all of your energy. It will keep you living in the illusion and never awaken to the divinity within your being. This illusion, this illusionary mind loves to create stories about stories. Heck, you may even be creating a story about this exploration of stories. The reality is, is that you are not this mind, nor your ego, nor your body, and certainly not an accumulation of all your stories. You are much more than can be expressed in words. You are an infinite soul beyond the ideas of freedom and love. You are, and always will be, so much vaster than any story your ego could invent. You will continue to exist long after the story has been forgotten by you and the world. Your being is naturally expansive and completely free. You have just been covering up your true infinite nature with stories. The tricky part in transcending any story is that our ego loves the drama of an emotionally juicy adventure. It's like chocolate ice cream to a child. Our lives' traumas and deep issues are so personal, wild, crazy, and feel so real that they often make us feel unique that we are even someone superior or special. The truth is, is that everyone was born uniquely super, super special. And we all have the same core issues deep inside. These core issues are about being unloved, unwanted, abandoned, unworthy. What a great recipe to instigate massive transformation in one's lifetime. Now, you may find yourself sticking to these issues because the mind gets busy entertaining the victim story instead of being truly curious about recognizing your divine infinite nature. These personal issues can make up a major part of who you think you are. So to let go of them, in many ways, can feel like letting go of your entire identity. If you drop the story, you would have to do the scariest thing of all. You'd need to totally reinvent yourself. Maybe this isn't such a bad thing. You could choose to only be loved, free, powerful, and without any limitations. Is this a challenge you would be willing to take on? Letting go of your story may feel like dying, yet in the end, there is no death without some kind of rebirth. So how does one truly transcend their story? Just watch it. Don't participate in it. Notice if you are focusing on what you want or don't want. See how present you are in the moment or just reprogramming yourself with more illusions from your past. The experience you have will always be created from your personal interpretation and universal perception. If you find you are really stuck putting energy into how you aren't enough of this or that, and you may simply need some tools to shift your experience, One thing that we can do is stop retelling our stories. When we hear ourselves let telling somebody our famous story that makes us feel small, powerless, or less than divine, it's a good thing to immediately stop yourself, even if you are in mid-sentence. As soon as you stop repeating your story, you stop giving it energy, and the story soon withers away. Imagine a big red stop sign in front of you and simply stop the mouth from talking. Don't move a muscle. Be absolutely still and silent and investigate deeper inside to discover where this story is coming from and what this part of you actually is yearning to feel, be, do, or have. So you almost, you almost become a an archaeologist explorer, and you start digging. And if you are socializing while you are storytelling, and you need some space to do the digging, 
gently remove yourself from the situation, go sit in the bathroom, investigate the source of this saboteur. It is worth it. These stories can ruin your life or transform it. If you take time to really look at your stories, you'll discover what it takes to transcend them completely. By simply seeing how your story is an illusion of the past that the ego is stubbornly holding on to, you are instantly free of it. The journey to financial freedom starts the minute you decide you were destined for prosperity, not scarcity, for abundance, not lack. It is a decision. It's a decision. It's always a choice for any of us, for anything. And abundance is everything. It's not, it's not, it's not just money. It's everything, abundance of life. Abundance of happiness, abundance of joy, bliss, tranquility, benevolence, prosperity, abundance. It's constant. And all we, it's like all we, we choose, right? You choose to be in the storytelling life or you choose to be in great abundance. And you literally increase your vibrational frequency with the universe up to that abundance. And then it constantly flows to you. And this civilization will get to the point where it will know this inherently, consciously. It will know it. It's just like an abundance of health. You get to the point where you will know that you can literally heal your body. Whatever's wrong with it. Or you want something. You can instantaneously manifest it. Move energy into form, create it into reality, and experience it. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted, and I'm sure that you all are, and the first thing that we care to do is what? Relax our bodies. Always relax the body. Focus on the breath. Focus on the breath and relax the body. The breath will assist you with relaxing the body. Easy in through the nose, easy out through the mouth. And when you do this, knowing that you are not the body, you are not the mind, you are not the ego, you are not the subconscious mind, you are not your name, you are not your character, you are the God within, the pure consciousness. And by focusing on the breath, you move into the now. And the now is everything that there is. There's no past. There's no future. Everything is in the now. And this also stills the ego mind and the subconscious mind, which means you leave it alone. You don't participate in it. You watch it without judgment, and this is how you learn how to master it, by watching it. A thought may come in, and remember, our thoughts that we generate go out. They don't come in. The thoughts that come in are programs that literally come from other people. They're thoughts from other people. So when you have moved into the now, focused on your breath, and you understand you're not the body, then you begin to master because you're not messing with anything. See, and over time, the ego and the mind will begin to realize we're not needed anymore. Always in a relaxed state, the body always focusing on the breath 
and this might sound crazy to some people, and what am I supposed to do, focus on my breath? It's not a hard thing to do. You're not sitting there wheezing and gasping. You're easily bringing in air through the nose and easily letting it out through the mouth. And this keeps you in a state of the now. And your body gets lighter. You want to know how you know that you're getting more relaxed? The body gets lighter. It's, it's, it's a feathery, lighter, buoyant, almost floating. And we all have memories, right? We have that library in our subconscious mind that we can go to anytime we want. We can review our past experiences. You know, go, oh, that was fun. Oh, I really enjoyed that. Oh, we had a good time there. Ooh, that wasn't too good. No, nah, I won't do that again. And it's fun. It's great that we can do it in these bodies. But some of us have a tendency... And I don't believe that it's on purpose. I don't believe it's conscious. I believe it's just habit. But they go in the past, they stay there so long that they end up bringing the past into a future that doesn't exist. They create that future from that past and they relive that past in that future. That's why a lot of people will say, no matter what we do, we always end up here. And understand, these are paths that we choose to take. You could picture yourself standing on a center path, gold circle, shimmering. You can look straight ahead. You see this canopy pathway. You see all these shimmering golden trees and leaves, and they have formed a canopy. You look and you see this brilliant emerald green grassy path, almost looks perfect. And it looks like, and, and you're standing on the now path. And it looks like it's hardly ever been used. And the one that you've, the, the, the past, right, on the left, looks very used. Now, they're all the same configuration. And, and the one on the right is the future. And it's very used. And the only one that seems almost new is the now. Most of us skip the now. This is why we suffer so much. We aren't able to understand the ego mind. We don't go within. And because we're either jumping in the past or we're jumping in the future what doesn't exist because we create the future and the now. Isn't that crazy? So a lot of us, we'll, we'll take the right path too. See? We'll, we'll go into the future. And we'll ask ourselves, when is this going to happen? When, when, when is this going to happen? When am I going to have this or that? When am I going to meet the right person? When am I going to get a better job? When am I going to have enough money so I can enjoy my life? When am I going to be well enough, healthy enough so I can enjoy my life? You see how we, we, we become occupied? And the past and the future are controlled by what? Right in this very moment. They're usually controlled by the ego mind. And we're constantly following the ego mind's lead because we don't understand it. And we sure as heck don't go into what? A relaxed state of being. So that's where the focus is highly recommended that we all concentrate on to be in the now. And Interestingly enough, all of us wander. None of us are exempt from it. You can be focused on something, and I know you've experienced it where you focus on it, and then you're somewhere else. And the reason is, is because we have tens of millions of thoughts flying by like clouds in the sky, right? But the interesting thing is, is they're not ours. They're not your thoughts. They're someone else's. You imagine all the thoughts flying around out there. So it's really easy for us to grab onto one of those clouds and ride it out. And, and here's a more, really important. 
to be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with yourself at all times. Also be in deep eternal gratitude at all times. So when this happens, you just say to yourself, not a biggie. I'll focus on my breath and I'll be in the now 3,000% of the time. And guess what? You will be. And you can do that automatically because you'll find yourself during the course of your day that you'll visit that uh, quite a bit at times because you'll, you'll wander off here, wander off there, and do, you know, and then you're here and then you're there. And you say, so I'll just focus on my breath and I'll be in the now. The now is where peace is. The now is where gentleness and kindness is. The now is where prosperity is. Because in the now, you have no expectations or attachments. They're gone. That's the ego mind. So in the now, that's where you manifest. Only in the moment. And see, you're clear and you're still. And you don't have all this chatter because it's not there. Because when you're in the now, you don't have the mind chatter. We all have that mind chatter. It's 24-7, never ends. But see, going into the now stills it. And you see all of the benefits of staying in the now. I'm not saying it's easy because we're all used to wandering. We're used to going off here, going off there, but going to the past, going in the future. We're always wandering because it's really difficult because there's so many goodies flying around, we think, uh, in the sky. And so we got all these clouds, these thoughts, these programs that we're constantly being enticed with. And a lot of times we pick one up and go, wow, oh, this, was, this wasn't too great. And this is a choice. No one's going to make you do any of this. You decide for yourself. No one else. Just you. Because it's literally all about you. And when we, when we finally discover who and what we are within, and we stay in the now, and we practice staying in the now, and eventually it gets almost like it's automatic. It's like an autopilot kicks in. And it, it, it fits together like a glove. These pieces of the puzzle snap into place as you begin to reconnect with the God within you. This is all the journey. This involves, this is part of the journey. Staying in the now. Now, you can look, in, we can look in our bodies anytime we choose. I'm not really saying that you look with eyes and saying with your heart mind and the God within, the pure consciousness, that you can look into this body and you can see lights, right? And you can see lights from your tailbone, the tailbone of this body all the way to the top of the head. They're all different colors and they're so vibrant and deep and expansive colors that you, you don't see those here on this planet. And there's spiritual etheric energy. It's just like you, spiritual etheric energy. And they're known as chakras. And a definition of a chakra is a wheel. These are wheels of light. And what do you do? What do we do? We, we flow through those. We flow through the wheels of light. And we know everything about these bodies. Isn't it amazing how we've been trained as a species, a civilization, to believe that we need external authority to heal our bodies? Isn't it? Isn't it amazing? Strange doctors, specialists, and how we do that. And we're all trained to do that. You imagine how surprised you're going to be when you discover 
that the power that you are has always been there, always will be, ever beyond it forever, has always been able to heal the body. That will be a, an epiphany in itself. And we will get there because we're slowly moving in that direction. It isn't a race. It is, just a, it is a decision, a choice that you make with yourself to go within. Now, we also know that the souls that we are, the God, there's many labels, many facets, right? The, the, the soul, the God, the God source, the higher self, the spirit, all part of the one that you are. And when we really do know, you feel it, you feel it, that you're not that body. It makes a big difference. And that you're the soul, the God within that body. And that you power that body. You do. The God that you are. The power that you are. Because we all know that when we leave the body, the body stops. Okay? And we aren't consciously aware enough to know that we could heal the body, whatever's going on with it. So see, with that, you see, that's how a lot of us end up leaving the body. Because we don't know. We haven't learned. We haven't reconnected with the God that we are. That we can heal this body. I don't need all these nurses and surgeons and everything hovering around my body. I can heal that body. Let's look and see what's going on with it. Okay? So, the soul, the God, the kingdom of God, the heaven, you, is the heaven on earth. Earth is the body. And every step that you take, consciously aware, you're creating paradise. Literally. Not only that, you're shining your light 360 degrees. What is the light? The God. The God. The pure consciousness is the light. It is the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, 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 purest of the purest, purest frequency and it's love and we flood this planet every day all of us each of us now you can choose you're still going to shine your light you know but you can say to yourself i'm going to walk into, into this group of people at this store or something and i'm going to just saturate them all with my light with the god that i am and you intend it through the heart mind and those people will experience wonderfulness you may not notice it as some of you will but you aren't looking for any kind of um, expectations or attachments with it you do it because that's what you are and what is consciously aware of? We know, each of us know, through our heart minds. That we are of and from the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal gratitude, eternal love, eternal peace. And we also know that if we were to take a starship off this planet, right, and we went out far enough so we could see the whole globe, we would see that glowed. Not only that, we'd look at the lights in the surrounding universe, and they all would look like candles lit in a dark room, dim, just dim. I mean, for goodness sakes, we've got eight billion gods on this planet. And I know that some of the parts of us are asleep. Other parts of us are awake. And we're all one. There's one God on this planet. And it is all of us collectively. And we know we have parts of ourselves, the gods that we are, that are asleep. 
You're not going to wake them up because they haven't decided to wake yet. They're with us always, but they're not participating in anything. Then we know that there are parts of us that are consciously aware, awake, to a certain extent. And those are the ones that we interact with. Those are the ones that, that participate in these meditations every day. Those are the parts. This is all the light energy beings and, and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. This is the ascended masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, Saint Germain, Christ, El Moria, Bandantia, Pell, God, Yahweh, Yeshua, the archangels, the cherubim, the seraphim, the archetypes. This is the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, agartha, and beneath earth. This is all of our loved ones who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we've inhabited. It's all the off-worlders, galactics, celestials. Now, light energy beings on this planet because of the eyes that we have with these biological forms, we can only see 1% of what is. So obviously, we miss a whole lot of these beings because they're in different light spectrums. They're in different frequencies. And, but they come in shapes, color, sizes, forms, configurations, of which most of the time we don't see. But there is a group that we're intimately connected with. The fairies, the sprites, the elves, the gnomes, the dwarves, the trees, the trolls, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, wood, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, the minotaur. And how do we know that we interact with them? Well, we take a lot of things for granted, like water. Could these bodies survive without water? No, we, we would have to leave them. Could they survive without air? We would have to leave them. What, what about going as far as fire and wood? We would have to leave them. We are intimately connected to the magics, the elementals. So therefore, intimately connected to the fairies, the sprites, the elves, the gnomes, the dwarves. Yeah, they exist. They're not out of a fairy tale book. That's a good disguise, isn't it? They're all energy beings, just like we are. You know, the off-worlders, celestials, galactics. Over a thousand species travel through this solar system every day. Trillions throughout the universes every day. We're familiar with a small group, Pleiadians, Syrians, Arcturians, Andromedans, Feline, Data Reticuli, Anunnaki, Nords, Greys, Draco, Reptilian, Golden Pyramid, Avion. Now this particular group has been assisting us in our evolution, enlightenment, ascension, freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. Now the archangels, they're a civilization that vibrate a different frequency than we do. That's why we don't see them like we see each other. But they're there lifetime after lifetime. And we may, we, you know, there's times where you'll interact with somebody that could be a complete stranger, could be a few minutes conversation, and you get this feeling in your heart. And feeling comes over you, and it's like, but that, there's, that, that wasn't just, you know, uh, a Mary Johnson or a, or a Bill Smith. That, that was an angel. And a lot of times when we interact with them, we talk with them, we don't really know it while we're doing it. We might at times kind of pick up on the frequency. It's usually after 
and then we feel like a, a kind of a, a, a bliss from within. Or when you need help, someone appears and they help you. Then they're gone. Or you, 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 you meet somebody that you feel so comfortable, so good with, within, right? So good with that it's almost like, have you ever done that? You met a stranger and you end up talking for an hour? And you said to him, you know, it's almost like I've known you my whole life. And they have, they have the same message, but they deliver it in a plethora of ways. And it's kind of like we either know or we don't. And it, it is, isn't it absolutely magna glorious, spectacular, stupendous, splendiferous that we're alive in these bodies? It is. And you remind yourself every day in your deep gratitude. When, when we're gods, when the gods that we are leave these bodies, we don't, we don't breathe. We don't breathe. We don't have the experience of breathing. We don't taste. We don't eat. We don't sleep. We don't go to the bathroom. We don't cry. We don't laugh. Can you imagine that? for just a moment. People say, well, you know, then I wouldn't have all these aches and pains and all these things that I deal with. But that's the beauty of it, because we can experience in physical form. And we, the gods that we are, are eternal. Eventually, we will leave these bodies and enter another physical form. But we don't even know what that is yet. Now, they can surround any one of us at any one time, the tens of thousands or even the tens of millions. Reason is, is because their vibrational frequency, they can hold large numbers in small areas. And if you'd like them to surround you, just ask, blink of the eye, they'll be there. And you will experience bliss. Now, the ascended masters have mastered ascending into the physical. They've mastered physical. They have ascended out of physical into pure consciousness, God form. We have ascended into physical. We are in the process of mastering physical. We are creating our experiences to perfect our creation. And all of us in the hundreds of millions, consciously aware, it doesn't matter if one part of us is a billion light years away. We're still all one. You see? Focused on this planet, with its complete, unmitigated liberation, head to toe, inside and out. And we're in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness. Bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, prosperity, abundance. And we're all one, and we're all God, and we're all love. And our God force, love, light, energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And we continue to expand and intensify and grow. Immediately form a circle of light around the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia Arya. In this now, this circle of light emanates from the gods that we all are within these bodies. This light is the highest of the highest, high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal love. 
There is no higher frequency. And we're flooding this planet throughout infinity and beyond, constantly, 24-7. All life, the highest supreme value in the universe is. See that through your heart, mind's motion picture. It's magnificent. It's like a rain of shimmering golden light that just keeps pouring down, saturating all life. with this deep eternal love. This light is so bright that it grays out the darkness of sacred space. Not only that, it would take a billion trillion suns to even come close to its brightness. We begin to send above the planet. We're immediately met with this massive ocean of glitter. Unlike any glitter you've ever seen. And the best way to describe it is, is that you have this massive grand finale fireworks that none of us have ever seen. And a massive grand laser light show. And then a ballroom globe, the mirror globes that we're all familiar with, is sitting in ballrooms and they just slowly spin and reflect the light all over. Except this globe is a trillion times larger and a trillion times more intense. Now imagine bringing all that together in one crescendo, describing this ocean of glitter. Now, we're all curious, so we look at the reflective points. We notice that they're little tiny microscopic perfectly etched mirrors, and we enter them. And we discover that all of us, everywhere and nowhere, are teaching and learning from each other. We never do not do that. We are always doing that. We're either students and teachers or teachers or students or both. It's fascinating. Remember that the tree is not life. The God within it is the life that allows the tree to be. It's the same with the bug in the rug and the fly on the wall, the bird in the sky. You can sit in a park and you can literally, or you can just sit by the window and look at the snow and learn. It's just, it's fascinating. We have this on our endless journey. How can we ever get bored? You look at a tree, what do you learn from the tree? There's many things if you look at it and start understanding. And it helps us. We're all helping each other. All of us gods, we're helping each other all the time. Assisting, serving, tending to. That's what we do our natural state of being. Being belligerent, angry, revengeful, vindictive, stressed, hurried, worried, fearful, all of these things is not our natural state of being. That's why it takes such a toll on these physical bodies. We're immediately met with the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all that we are the power of healing. We're then met with the violet blue purple flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve as the gods that we are. We're then met with the white fire. This is the column of light that we all created to remind us all that from head to toe, inside and out, throughout infinity and beyond, we are protected. Period. Our vibrational frequency is so high in the deep eternal love that any lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies, frequencies can't come near us. They would vaporize. Some make the mistake of coming near us. They vaporize. The others learn and say, no, they won't come near us. Same with demon possession and attachments, all of that, because of our high vibrational frequencies. Yet, only you, only you, only you have the power. 
that if you decide to lower your vibrational frequency low enough, whether consciously or unconsciously, your hatred, anger, fear, greed, manipulation, dishonesty, envy, revenge, hurriedness, anxiety, You will lower your vibrational frequency low enough to create a breach in the white fire armor. Then all the lower dark matter, survivor matter frequencies can come flooding in. Then it changes things, see? Because then attachments, demon possession, lots of lower dark matter, survivor matter frequency events can happen. Now, if you do decide to do this, you are immediately met with a double column of light. First part of this column is the purple transmuting flame. We created this part of the column to remind us all that we can bring in the purple transmuting flame. We can transmute all of these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutral light substance, sending them to pure consciousness where they are no more. We are then met with the second half of this double column of light, and it is the violet ray. We created this column of light to remind us all that we can bring in the violet ray right behind the purple transmuting flame, we can cleanse and purify the area where these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies were, sealing the breach in our white fire armor, restoring our vibrational harmony of the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest deepest, and the purest of the purest purest. Eternal love, gratitude, peace. We're then met with the golden light, pink light. This is a column of light that we all created to remind us all of the gods that we are within these physical vessels, that we are the sun. We are the sunlight. We are the sun sets and the sun rises. We are the rain and the rainbows. We are the skies and the cloud. We are the trees and the forests. We are the oceans, rivers, lakes, and streams. We're trees in the forest. We're everything, all the animals, the mountains, the snow, and everything is us. So the next time you see a sunset or a sunrise, a snowfall, a rainbow, starlit night sky, ocean front, normally we all say, isn't that beautiful? And we have this feeling in the center of our chest, right? Instead of saying, that is the God that I am. Through the heart mind, not the ego mind. That is the God that I am. That rainbow is the God that I am. Obviously, you don't say that to someone who is asleep. You don't need to. You acknowledge to yourself, period. It's a wonderful feeling because it is you. We continue to ascend above the planet. And some of us step outside our physical form and hover effortlessly above them. If we're carrying physical form, we do this because it's fun and we can. We come into full contact with this massive crystal and light tower. We created this tower, all of us. It's larger than the solar system and beyond. In the center of the column, we see this massive oblong sphere. In the center of the sphere is a golden white bowl of light. It is surrounded by numerous multicolored rings of light that almost appear to never end. This all is creating this super bright white misty cloud. And you can see the sparkling and, and the arcs of light through it. And it's absorbed through our heart mind. It is like a warm embrace that never ends. We discover that the golden white bowl of light is the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal love, gratitude, peace. And then the rest is well-being, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, bliss, joy, 
tranquility, benevolence, great prosperity, great abundance. It's unending. And we discover that all of this is a reflection of the gods that each and every one of us are. At the top, we designed it so the golden ocean can come cascading down 360 degrees. As it's doing right now. As it does throughout infinity and beyond. And this ocean is the purest and the highest of the deepest eternal love. And it's flooding all life, the highest supreme value in the universe is right now, this planet. Nothing can hide in any crack or crevice, nothing. It is all bathed and saturated indefinitely. Now, we are drops of this golden ocean. We also hold the essence of this golden ocean. Golden ocean is the drops, drops of the golden ocean. And the only illusion that's ever played on us is separation. We see our meditative sphere at set center circle. We all created this sphere almost four years ago. It holds well over 1,700 of our meditations in perpetual motion. Hundreds of millions of us on and off world every day for almost four years. Feel that power, that deep, eternal, loving energy that is constant every single day. And watch it through your heart, minds expand, grow, multiply and showering this planet constantly with higher and higher and higher vibrational frequencies of deep eternal love, gratitude, and peace. It is constant. This is super powerful. It is unmatched. It is consistent. It isn't once in a while. It isn't once for a great event or a spectacular situation. It is every day. Uncomfortable metal, metal chatter, me, mental chatter is the cause of all suffering in our lives. Uncontrollable mental chatter is the cause of all suffering in our lives. The moment we stop the mind, for even a few minutes, a powerful peace-filled energy arises inside each and every one of them. Try it and see. I'll join you in the meditation and I'll return to close us out.
take an easy breath in through the nose. And an easy breath out through the mouth. Move easily and slowly. To become the divine observer of your mind and step back from the thousands of thoughts that run through your head each day. Simply choose to become the ever-present witnessing observer of each experience. Choosing to be vigilantly aware of this ever-present observer of your mind can make the typical tragic, dramatic day transform into a harmonic symphony of joy and love. For today, devote all your energy to watching the incessant chatter happening inside your mind without buying into its drama. doesn't matter what the mind does today. Just be a super observer. Watch with amazement. If you get tangled up in some important thoughts, don't try to stop them, change them, or participate in them. Simply sit back, even deeper behind your mind. Relax your body. You can find it extremely entertaining to simply watch, listen, and have a good laugh all day long. So if you will, take this with you for the rest of the day, into the evening and night, and into the following morning. We will return here Friday, December 7th, 2022, 3 p.m. Eastern, to continue our global guided meditation. <laughs>